everybody, it's me. I'm back after a bit of a hiatus again. Um, but let's crack on because I've got a couple to go through in quick succession. And the first one is quite special because up until very, very recently, this was actually the nearest distillery to where I live in Yorkshire. Um, a new distillery has just opened called Coop King, which is even closer. But um, I am very fortunate, uh, considering I'm so quite lucky to actually have uh, part of the bottle, not a full bottle, of um, the Spirit of Yorkshire uh, distillery projects, their maturing malt. And now this is actually uh, edition number two. Um, and this sample bottle, of which there is a, a little bit left, um, was very kindly donated by a good friend of mine, Joe Clark, who uh, actually used to be um, working for me when I was manager of the whiskey shop in York. And um, we're actually going to go back to Joe in a little bit later. But uh, let me tell you about this to start with in terms of the distillery. So the distillery was uh, founded in 2016 by uh, these two guys, um, uh, Tom Meller, who is a, a, a sort of a, a farmer, but also uh, runs a brewery called the Wall Top Brewery, uh, and a business partner called David Thompson. And the pair of them opened the distillery uh, in a place called Hunmanby, uh, which is here uh, in the, uh, the the north of England, uh, very near to Filey, which is uh, quite a well-known uh, seaside town. If you're not uh, if you're not too familiar with with England or the United Kingdom, um, it's uh, Filey is a, a quieter little, not even a town, a village uh, just south of Scarborough, which is uh, a fairly popular seaside resort in the north of England. Uh, where the weather's good, it's fantastic, best fish and chips in the world, but when it's chucking down with rain, which is about 90% of the time, it's, it's less attractive. Um, so kind of out in the sticks, I've been to the distillery myself in person and um, the distillery itself is not too much to look at from the outside. Um, it's I wouldn't call it an industrial estate, it's not really big enough for that, but it's kind of corrugated iron on the outside and it's a bit square. However, inside, here's a picture of inside, um, looks absolutely fantastic and they've got quite an unusual setup in that they have um, two pot stills, but they also have a column still um, and on the spirit still they actually have an arm that they can pull off and attached to the column still. So essentially you could get the vapors rather than running off the pot still um, and straight into the condenser, it actually runs back into the column still and you can kind of get almost like not quite triple distillation, but kind of two and a half distillation going through. It means I can really play around with it and they are quite experimental and this is partly due to the part um, of their master distiller or the director of whiskey, I think uh, I think he's titled himself, who is this guy, Joe Clark. Um, my mate who uh, when I was working at the whiskey shop and I had a little sign outside for a, a part-timer um, came bounding in um, endless energy just one of these guys that is incredibly hard to dislike um, just is, is like the Duracell bunny just keeps going and going and going incredibly passionate about whiskey he was an absolute boom to the business um, and after working with the whiskey shop he ended up working with uh, Eddie Ludlow at the Whiskey Lounge so if you're in the UK you probably would have heard of them he was setting up a lot of the festivals uh, and now he is essentially the master distiller at Spirit of Yorkshire so um, fantastic you know I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled for him um, I think he's uh, he's loving it every time I speak to him and um, you know fair play to him he's, I, I wish him all the best so um, the when the distillery was set up they actually um, it, the project itself started in, in 2012, but the distillery didn't start operation until 2016. Um, and they brought on board as a sort of consultant, uh, this guy, who's a guy called Dr. Jim Swan, very, very well known in the whiskey industry as um, essentially the, the, the guru of the science side. Um, he was he was very much about the scientific, the chemistry of, of whiskey and whiskey production, and whiskey making. He was one of the first people to come up with the flavor wheel, one of which looks like this, essentially um, kind of breaking down flavors and being able to not measure them, but, but make it easier to kind of figure out what you were talking about when you were when you were talking about whiskey flavors um, he'd worked on he'd worked with the Klein Leach distillery um, uh, Amra uh, Kilhoman he was very much kind of involved with bringing on board new distilleries uh, and and being a consultant for them and he did quite a lot of work with Cavalan in, in Taiwan and he's very much associated with the reason that they are so popular now um, now, fortunately, he died in February of 2017, and his loss is probably still felt in, in the distillery now. They, they kind of talk about him, but there's a definite tinge of sadness because he really was influential in in how they uh, how they operate. And they very are uh, they very are. That's not even a phrase, man. They very much are um, a new distillery, and 
they don't use the wood, but you could quite easily throw them in this camp if they're a craft distiller. Um, but they are trying new things and, and really playing around, but being very, very honest with, with what they're doing. And, you know, speaking to Joe, okay, admittedly, it's Whiskey Geek to Whiskey Geek. But he, he the information that he sent me in terms of the press releases, the detail that they're putting into it is, is absolutely fascinating. If you're into that, really in-depth information as to what is going into that whiskey. So the, um, the, the, the malting, the mashing, the milling, the fermentation actually takes place at the Baltop Brewery, uh, and that's about three miles away, so it takes about 10 minutes for them to take it across to the distillery to start, to, to start the um, distillation process. As I say, there's two pot stills, and then they've got this column still as well. So um, this particular one, so about uh, about 90% of their maturation at the moment is um, bourbon casks, which are actually getting from Old Forester. Um, but I, the breakdown of this, so um, this is DP, Distillery Project 002, um, they did have a 001 that was, um, from what I can remember, was a, a representation of kind of the, the heftier side of their whiskey, whereas this is supposed to be a slightly lighter, um, uh, a lighter representation of, of what their whiskey could be. Um, so this was actually, and I, I've got this, I've got, I will never remember this, so it's, it's all written down for me. So um, this is a combination of, uh, of bourbon casks, um, red wine cask that they've actually got from Cavalan, um, and it's a, 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 a type of cask called an STR, which is a shaved toast rechar. So essentially, uh, the red wine cask, if you didn't, if you took the red wine out of the cask and then you put some whiskey in, the danger is, is that you're picking up some of the kind of the quite harsh sulfury um, notes of a red wine, particularly an intense red wine, um, that's the equivalent kind of like Cabernet Sauvignon, that sort of thing, um, but that's kind of on the very edge of the inside of the cask. So what, um, and this was actually, the STL was almost like an invention of, of Jim Swan himself during his time at Cavalan, is you essentially just shave the inside of the cask. You don't take too much of it. You sort of take a layer off to try and get rid of that harsher edge that the whiskey would pick up. Then you just toast it and then toast it, toast it, and then you rechar it. And that gives you the full influence of the red wine cask without the risk of having this hard, possibly sulfuric edge coming into uh, into the whiskey as well and just kind of tainting it a little bit. Um, uh, so there's the STR cask, there's bourbon cask, and there's also orange Oloroso sherry cask, which are used as well. Um, about 60% of this is actually a spirit that's from the column still, and 40% is from their pot still. Um, and this was, um, it was bottled. There's only 2,000 bottles of this in existence. Um, and um, up until very, very recently, you could only get this at the distillery at 39.95. But there is a shop that's just announced a couple of weeks ago in nearby Malton, which is a little bit closer to York. They are also selling it in store. So, you know, the quantities aren't huge here. Um, and you know, it, you basically you can only get this from the distillery. So if you're watching from overseas or if you're watching from further afield in the UK, basically get in touch with the distillery and see if they've still got some bottles left. Um, so the bottling, this was actually um, a combination of fillings from a 2000. What did you say? 2016 in June, September, and October, and then it was bottled in March of 2018. So it's about. 18 to 20 month old so you know we haven't we're not hitting the three years because they haven't hit three years yet they're not been there for three years if you go to the distillery it's well worth visiting um, they do a, a fantastic tour it's really interesting to see it's essentially one room but they've also got a cafe to one side which is i think it's maybe about 18 months it's been there now and it's absolutely beautiful they've done a really really good job with it so um you know this is it's, it's a new whiskey, which I'm always interested in trying. It's a new distillery, which is always fascinating. Um, obviously, I've kind of got this personal element involved in terms of, you know, Joe I hired. Um, I'm fairly certain I was the first whiskey um, involvement for him with whiskey in terms of uh, work that he had. And, and now he's a, he's a master distiller. So, you know, I'm, I'm really, really wanting this to, to work out for him. And I'm really wanting it. Everything is pointing to they know what they're doing, you know, even though Joe used to look like this. Now that next to him is also Ollie Chilton from the Whiskey Exchange. So he probably, this was on a trip to Ireland. And I think in this picture, they're massively hung over. So both of them probably aren't that chuffed with me putting the picture up, but uh, you know, he, he looked like that. I mean, look at that hair, man, get a haircut. Um, so, you know, it's, I, I just, I'm really, really hopeful that it takes off. They're getting very, very good reviews and um, yeah, you know, it's it's great. So please do try this if you can. I've not even tried it yet and I'm telling you to get it. So 
So it's bottled at 46% and straight away on the nose, there is the youthfulness to it. You can tell this is really young. It's very sprightly, it's very zingy. There's a citrus citrusiness to it, but it's not quite, yeah, I said orange Oloroso sherry. It's not an oranginess. This is uh, lemon and lime, but there's a really nice effervescence to it as well. It's kind of sherbety. It's like lemon sherbet. It's really zingy, really nice on the nose. There's a touch of sweetness coming through, but you know, this is young. This really is youthful. But there is a, a sweeter side, a sweeter ele element on the nose that's actually very, very pleasant. Mm, and that that sweeter edge on the nose really comes through on the palate. I was thinking about saying it would be nice if there was more of that sweet sherry-ish element there but it wouldn't come through because it is that young. But actually that, that, that sherry element, that Oloroso sherry, it really kicks in there. There is a slight dryness, but I'm not picking up too much of this red wine character. There is a bit of red fruit there, but the, the red wine influence isn't as obvious as something like say the, the wood finish Ben Romux, for example, um, where you, know, you can tell that there is a red wine cask influence. It's, in here, it's a lot more subdued. It's more of a sherry element. There is a bit of vanilla from the bourbon cask as well. There's a lovely mouthfeel as well. It's, I wouldn't say it's rich, but it's not light. It's not lacking in body. The, the sprightliness, the zinginess, the sherbetiness is there. But this lemon sherbet is then tempered with almost a, you know meringue? When, you, when you're whipping meringue and it's not quite at stiff peaks, so you get a very sweet, almost creamy meringue, that kind of element's coming through. The sweetness on here is really nice. It's well up my street. It's not quite lemon meringue pie. There's not quite the the uh, biscuitiness that that you would get with you know. There's there's the lemon curd, but it's more of a zingy lemon curd. It's like lemon sherbet and meringue, but there's not this pie element to it as well. But it's really good considering it's like twenty months old. It's not even two years old. It's it's really really good. Um, I would he heartily recommend this to anybody looking for something new different to put on a, I mean, put this on a blind tasting, nobody's gonna get it anyway, because most people probably wouldn't have even heard of it. But as an indication of what this distillery could do as a three-year-old, a five-year-old, a 10-year-old, this is brilliant. This is really, really good. Um, and this is the opposite of something like the Lakes Distillery, where they had their one blend um, that was not their spirit, but they were releasing under the Lakes banner and if it was supposed to be a representation of what they were going to do, was doing them no favours whatsoever at all. Whereas this, you can see there is quality here. You can see that there is care and attention and, and there is love put into this. And they've really thought about what they want to do with this whiskey as a representation. I'd love to try 001 if that's a heavier version, um, because this is light and zingy and it's very summery as well. It would really work in kind of a summer's day. It's light enough to hold that but it makes me very intrigued to see what the others are. I'm wondering if they're gonna do a James Bondy themed 007 if they ever get that far. Um, but you know, it's making me want to try and find 001. And Joe, if you're watching and you've got any 001 spare, please send me some because I wanna try it. Um, but yeah, I would definitely implore you to try and get hold of this, if you can, Spirit of Yorkshire, Maturi Malt, Distillery Project 002, because it is an absolute banger. I'm loving that sweetness. It's a very, it's almost creamy. Maybe orange cream, like fries chocolate creams. It's like a cream fondant. Oh, that sweetness is fantastic. Now, unfortunately, this was supposed to be part of a live stream tasting for St. George's Day with the likes of No Nonsense Whiskey and Maltman Mike and everything like that. Uh, but guys, if you're watching, I do have a bit of this spare and I probably am gonna send you a sample of this because this is well worth trying and I'd be really interested to see other people's reviews. But for me, 
I think it's superb. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, it's a really good start for them. It's a really good advert for what they are capable of doing. Um, and I can't wait to see what they come up with late, um, next because I think it's fantastic. So yeah, grab hold of it if you can. Right, I'll see you at the next one. Cheers.